Hello and welcome to another Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I shall be restoring a Matchbox 25C Bedford BP Tanker. These were first produced in 1965. As usual I shall start by removing the rivet on the underside of the model to start pulling it apart for painting. Now to remove the base from the model. Next I have to remove the wheels and axles. To do this I remove the burr on the end of the axle with a dremel, like this. Now for the front wheels and axle. And finally I removed the pivot post for the cabin. I'm now going to start stripping off the paint using poly stripper and various brushes. I hold the model parts with tweezers so I don't get the stripper onto my hands. This process can be quite time consuming and therefore I've sped up this clip. Now that the paint stripper has done its job, I remove the paint using a toothbrush in a bath of water. It can be quite difficult to get all the paint off in the first go so this may require a second coat of paint stripper. With the paint removed we can see the details in the metalwork Here's the engine with the radiator, air filter, exhaust and inlet manifolds. On the driver's side you can see a diesel tank with a fuel cap on it. And on the passenger side a padlocked toolbox. I notice the axle supports are very straight on this model. If you look carefully you can see they are strengthened with small metal triangles. Here you can see I am removing small remnants of paint that were left over after the paint stripping. I'm gently using a metal scriber so that I don't damage the original casting. I 
I've had to sand the roof with some very fine emery paper just to remove some minor oxidation of the metal. Here's a close up of the details on the side of the tanker. You can see that there are three small raised lines. These were used during production so that the workers could accurately position the stickers quickly and efficiently. Here are all the parts finally ready for undercoating. Here I've drilled out the rivet post and I'm going to tap a thread in it so that I can reinsert a screw when it comes to reassembling the model. Here I am test fitting the screw to see that the threads were cut correctly. Now it's time to start painting. So I've got something to hold the model when I'm spraying it. I super glue tacks onto the base of each part. Here comes the undercoat. After undercoating you can really see the details in the casting. This has got the word Bedford on the front of the cabin and also a small number plate below the grill. Now finally it's time for the top coat colours. I find that Tamiya paints give a very high gloss finish and they are my product of choice when spray painting models. Here's a shot of the high gloss finish achievable using two coats of paint. Now it's time to paint the chassis green. I love this colour, it's so bright and beautiful and it reminds me of when I had a BP tanker as a child. And now, last but not least, the rear body of the tanker to be sprayed gloss white.
Right, I'm back in the shed, and here's one of the axles that I had to wear down. It's a little bit too short to reform, so I'm going to make a fresh axle out of a nail. So using my battery drill and a file in the vise, I modify the profile of the head of the nail to resemble a hubcap on the end of the axle. I've done this many times in the past and the end product can look very very similar to an original matchbox axle. Always remember to finish them off with some fine emery paper and make them shine like new. Here I am cutting my new axle slightly longer than the original. This way I have some metal on the end to reform to captivate the wheels. To refit the wheels to the model, I have to deform the end of my new axle. To do this, I use my drill press and two nails that have been modified with hollows drilled into the ends of them. After I refitted the cabin pivot pin, it's time to put the tanker body back onto the chassis. To do this, I use some araldite around the rivet post. I don't, as a rule, reassemble models using araldite alone. However, the head of the screw that I chose for this project is too small for the hole and therefore will not work. I will still insert it but it will only be for cosmetic reasons. Right here are the BP stickers that I ordered from overseas. They took about a week to get here. I also got some Tate and Lyle ones too for another model I'm doing up. So these are water slide decals and you have to be very careful with them. You only get one shot. If you stuff it up then uh, you have to chuck them in the bin. So basically you soak them in lukewarm water until they uh, separate from the backing sheet and using some tweezers you first of all dampen the area that you're going to place the, uh, the decal and then you hold it roughly in position and slide the backing paper off of the transfer leaving the transfer on the model. Now it never happens first time so it can be a bit of stuffing around but that's why you put water on the model first so it gives you time to slide it around into position so here I am putting it into those uh, markings on the side where the sticker is supposed to go when I'm happy with it I just dab it with a dry cotton bud and take off any excess water you may not have noticed but this uh, vehicle had no cabin interior um, so I managed to scrounge one from another BP tanker that I have uh, but it had no steering wheel so I had to get a steering wheel from this other blue car that was basically only good enough to throw in the bin and I uh, glued it together with uh, super glue and baking powder which forms a very strong bond uh, I gave it a quick coat of paint and it turns out not too bad now it's the time that you've all been waiting for the grand reveal of the finished product. Oh shit! 
put that one right the way through. 